talk to somebody and like Google it. I, you know, you can learn so much just by doing those two things. It's a lot less time consuming and it's typically very much free. I'm interested in your take, obviously, on uh, subject area expertise and how someone can build that. So, you know, you worked in healthcare analytics to start with, and you've kind of, you know, taken your career and steps, I guess, continuing down that road. Right. But, you know, how did, and you a little bit fell into it because you were in healthcare before. Right. But, you know, how, wh what would you recommend people to do to establish more of that subject area expertise if you can? Yeah, that's a really good question. And something I actually get asked a lot because I talk about that quite often where I'm like, you know, it's not only about technical skills. It's like the, something that will really set you apart in the market is having the domain knowledge. So everyone asks, you know, how do you get the domain knowledge? Um, you know, I can only speak for myself and how I learned the healthcare stuff. I learned enough healthcare stuff in, uh, you know, school and all that and, you know, learning it in course uh, classes and things like that. I think that talking to someone in that field is 10 out of 10, the biggest thing I would recommend. Because I, if somebody, and I've had many, many, many people come to me and ask specifically, I want to get in healthcare analytics, what should I know? And I can rattle off a ton of stuff. Like I can rattle off 30 things off the top of my head uh, th that they should know. Um, you know, I'm like claims data, ICD codes, CPT codes, LOINC, all these things. I'm like, these are things that I use every single day. And if you want to get into the space, um, these are things that you should do research on. And I can provide some things that, you know, I actually work with and data sets and stuff like that, because I have that, that, you know, subject matter expert. I know this domain really well. And so oftentimes, you know, people are like, well, I want to get into healthcare. Do I need to go back and get like, a, a, um, you know, a master's degree in healthcare? Do I need to go take uh, this? And I'm like, well, just talk to somebody, talk to somebody and like Google it. I, you know, you can learn so much just by doing those two things. And it's, it's very, um, it's a lot less time consuming and it's typically very much free. Uh, and, and you can learn a lot about, uh, you can ask more questions, right? You, you, maybe you make a mentor out of that. You can keep asking them questions. They can keep guiding you, but you can learn a ton of, of very domain specific things just by talking to people in that profession. Um, and that's probably my biggest advice to a lot of, that is my biggest advice to a lot of people is try to just engage with someone in that, in that domain, in that field that you want to be in. I, I love that. I mean, something that almost echoes what you're saying exactly is I, I, if I was looking for a new position, I would find people who have the job that I want to have and mm -hmm. ask them how they got there. Right. Exactly. I wouldn't ask them to help me get there. I'd, I just asked them what they did you know, hopefully I'd be willing to give something in return if I, if I could, or, you know, like learn their story and, and approach them in an effective way. Um, something I also really like about your story is that, you know, it, it isn't like you made this huge jump into analytics, right? Mm -hmm. You were working in, in, in healthcare and it, it sort of in medicine, right? And like, you just slowly moved shades and shades away from that. Right. It was never yeah, like this, this jumping off of a, one cliff to another. It's like it's a gradient. And right. I think a lot of people, when they're trying to transition to data roles, they think they have to completely forget their past. So you'd mm -hmm. mentioned someone as a teacher that they're looking into to get into a different space. It's like leverage that like you're a teacher, try and work somewhere in education and kind of right. move that role. And, you know, after a couple of years, if you've slowly transitioned over time, you might be able to work in just a pure data analyst role in whatever domain you want. But, you know, why forget about your past? You put in a lot of work. It's not like a sunk mm -hmm. cost scenario. Like you can still leverage that to be, to be in your favor or to, to create opportunities because, I mean, it's not just you and me saying this, like people in business know that subject area expertise is important, right? If, if I have um, someone come in, they're the greatest data scientist uh, that I've ever interviewed for one of our roles. And they don't understand how the game of golf works, right? They've never, <laughs> they, they like don't understand what a, a par four is or like they don't understand the basics of the game. That's like almost as much work to explain that to them as it is for them it's to, a right? That's like, a problem for sure. <laughs> like there's just these levels of, of nuance that take time and take understanding and take interest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I doubt someone who's never, 
again, like I'm using golf as an example, who's never played golf and like had never read about golf or didn't understand how the, the rules work, they wouldn't really have that interest to dive into it that much further. Right. I mean, that's also yeah, a barrier. It, if you haven't picked up golf by like 30, uh, you definitely don't have much interest in it. 